Hey, welcome back. Uh, my name is Dino, and today we'll be talking about, in this mini lecture, Manipulation Nation. The web is the world's biggest social experiment. Um, the focus will be this video by Vpro, a Dutch uh, broadcaster. It's a public broadcaster. It's called What Makes You Click. And there's two clips, uh, one featuring Trist Tristan Harris from Time Well Spent, who used to work at Google, and Natasha Schuel from NYU who talks about the idea of addiction. Um, you might want to pause here and find the video. If you if you go into this, this thing called YouTube, it's a video platform. I, I know you I know you know YouTube. But Google V Pro, what makes you click, you can find it pretty easily. Um, make sure you put on the subtitles unless you know Dutch. Uh, thoughts on the video that you have afterwards. Uh, which parts of the video clip clips resonate with you. Do you ever wake up in the morning and turn your phone over and maybe think, why do you do this? What's the personal impact of that? Those are some, some sort of questions to sort of prime the pump before watching the video or maybe after watching the video and before um, sort of having this discussion with me here. Uh, clip one, again, Tristan Harris from Time Well Spent. Here's a quote from him. Every single player, every app, every website, every service is competing ultimately for attention. Um, absurdity alert. Even if you're building a meditation app. What are the implications of this competition of uh, where every single app, every website, every platform, etc. is competing for your attention? Even meditation apps, which are, should be making you come we are being manipulated at every s uh, stage to stay on apps as long as possible and it's taking away time from other things uh, if you look at this like an evolutionary system Facebook is like an organism and Twitter is an organism YouTube is an organism and each iteration that they're mutating new persuasive techniques they're trying new things to be, m to be more survive to be fit to survive, to get more people's attention. Sorry, that's a, the last part's not that that quote's not so good, but they're they're iterating to survive. The question is, otherwise, if they don't survive, if they don't iterate, what happens? If they don't evolve, they'll fail. So as a result, there's like this arms race for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any platform on social media, any app on your phone, to compete to evolve, to be more persuasive, to make you stay on that platform or app as long as possible, to get your attention, which means your time. Um, Harris talks about the idea of a slot machine. And that's this is talked more about by Natasha Shul later on. A slot machine is persuasive because it operates on the principle of intermittent variable reward intermittent variable reward which means that you pull some lever and either sometimes you get an exciting enticing reward and other times you don't this is a bit of a leading question are phones slot machines sometimes you get a text sometimes you don't sometimes the app you have on your phone has a little um, red alert saying that, you, that you've been contacted they all have intermittent variable rewards. Sometimes you get those messages you want, sometimes you don't. Sometimes the messages are great, sometimes they're not. And when something is giving you so many choices, it's hard to argue or think that there could be any downsides to that. It's just that we're not asking the real question, which is, what are these choices for? What are these many increasing number of choices on our apps and, our, and social media platforms for? You can probably get it from what we've been talking about. To, to make you pay attention, to engage you further, and to keep your time from doing other things, even other apps and other platforms. Number two, also in What Makes You Click, Natasha to, uh, Shul, currently at NYU, on the idea of addiction. Quote, gamblers will often speak about having a sensation that they're merging with the machine and, and that they can't tell you know where their fingers end. And the screen begins, and they feel that they know what's going to happen next. They become so absorbed in the game that what they're really playing for is continuing that absorption. Why are we so absorbed with our devices? Why are we? Why are gamblers so absorbed with 
in gambling and the machines that they play with or the games they play? It's a harder question to answer. It's more of a bigger metaphorical question. It's almost like it, it goes to maybe who we are as human beings. Why are we absorbed with things like these things? Maybe we're just compulsive, addictive human beings. Um, the jackpot only serves to recycle the winnings back into the machines that they keep playing. Keep staying in this kind of zone where time, space, a sense of monetary value, and even sense of self falls away. Have any of you at any time ever found this, felt a sense of self fall away while using social media, the internet, an app, a platform, etc.? I'm sure any of you who have a phone near your bed have at one time or another gotten up in the middle of the night and started t touching your phone, clicking through, and then all of a sudden it's a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour later, and you're like, well, I should go back to sleep. Our sense of self on these devices just falls away. Very common. Quote, when you're at the machine, your whole bodily posture is different. You're kind of slumped down, your eyes look a little glazed over, and you're just repetitively tapping with your finger. Tap, 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 tap. We all have these sorts of experiences today with machines, whether it's trying to buy something in an eBay auction or playing Candy Crush. It's a sense that you you can just keep going and you don't know what the next is going to be. Ever felt yourself repetitively tapping while using social media or the internet, your apps on your phone or up, uh, another device? Uh, there's a video, there's a small clip, maybe four or five seconds long in this video where it's just a, a close up of a person with a, like an iPad a tablet just tapping away and it looks like someone's just addicted to whatever they're doing um, we are addicted by like it once you see the amount of time you spend on a device it's it's hard to say it's anything other than an addiction because you use it so often whether it's checking your phone checking texts or me checking my email over and over and over and over again corporate value is increasingly coming to be measured in terms of clicks and likes it's a kind of nano monetization of human experience that does create that image of the slot machine players just tapping again there's a tapping clip in the in the video from 10 2035 to 2110 what are the implications of nano monetizing experience do you have any ideas any thoughts i would say it's like we're cheapening human experience oh you know i used to have conversations with people Go on long walks with people. Instead, it is I'm on my phone, on the, on the web, doing something that at the receiving end is being disaggregated into little moments that are being used to persuade me to keep using that same device. I think I'm getting a little emotional now. Uh, thanks for watching. That was Manipulation Nation. The web is the world's biggest social experiment. Thanks for watching. I look forward to having you back soon. Take care.